welcome. So brilliant Susie and Breed have organized this. This is the wellness weekend. Um, so I think you've got quite a few things lined up, but hopefully this is a great kickstart for your morning. And you can also, it's gonna be recorded so you can watch it whenever you like um, and do it many, many times, hopefully. <laughs> so welcome. Now, if you're not used to practicing yoga, um, then we're, this is going to be a beginner's level practice. So we're going to start nice and slow. I'll just explain the principles of the practice. And you're going to basically move your body with your breath, but coming from a place of ease. So you should never be in any pain of any kind. You should just enjoy the practice. And that is the key. It is a practice. So what you can do today may not be what you can do in a couple of months' time. The more you practice, the more you'll open up, the more ease you'll find in your body and the more ease you'll get in your mind. And those of you that don't know about yoga, it's a 4,000-year-old practice. It's very popular now because I think we're just beginning to realise in the West how powerful it is to communicate with our body and our breath together as one on a regular basis. Um, it's really good for us in so many ways. The list is very long. So if you just want to start sitting down, um, if you're able to sit cross-legged, fabulous. But if you're not, you can just reach your legs out. And I'll, I'll mute you all so there's no interference. Um, so let me do that now. Sometimes you get a bit of feedback. That's great. So just sit as comfortably as you can. If you've got blocks and cushions, you may want to sit on your block. That's a great, great way to begin. If you're quite tight in your hips, just sit on a block, sit on a cushion. And then you just sit in a cross-legged position or you can just have your legs out like this, hands resting on the knees. And what I want you to do is just come into your breath. So take a big breath in through your nose and a big sigh out of your mouth. And do that again, big breath in through your nose and a big sigh out. And now sweep your arms up. Sweep up with your breath. So you're going to inhale, 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 reach to the top. Interlace the fingers and press the palms of the hands up to the ceiling. And now look up at your hands. Look at the ceiling. Grow taller through the side body. Feel the weight of the pelvis pulling you down. And then release the hands and rotate at the wrists. Let's rotate both directions, just loosening up the joints, bringing movement back into every area of the body. Great, now rest the hand down on the earth next to you if you can. And just reach the left arm up over the ear. So your right fingertips can touch the earth and you're just reaching through the left side of the body and you're just waking up this left side. And maybe some of you can lower the right forearm down onto the mat, you can reach it out beside you, or maybe you're quite high, it really doesn't matter. What matters is you're breathing into the left side of your body. As you breathe in, find length. As you breathe out, you soften. Inhale, you reach. And then exhale, just take your arms all the way over to the other side. Left hand down, right arm up, and you reach. It's great to see you all this morning. This is gonna wake you up. So press the right seat bone down, reach through the fingertips, inhaling, and then exhale. Now bring both your arms to rest on your knees. The arms just rest. And then you're just gonna close your eyes and just take a big breath in and a big sigh. <sighs> so as you inhale, you're oxygenating your blood. You're lengthening the crown of your head to the ceiling and you're feeling the breath expand inside you. And now long exhale. So really slowing down the breath, slowing down your heart, is making everything very conscious. You're right here on your mat. Inhale. Exhale. Now sweep the arms wide again. And this time as you do so, in the morning especially, it's a great way to start the day. Just think of all the things that you are grateful for. And right now, any minute now, it's going to be officially the first day of spring. So sealing in feelings of gratitude between your hands, just for this gorgeous earth that we live on as you bring the prayer down to your heart center. And you just pause for a moment, just maybe even carving out this time for your body to move and breathe. Just be grateful for that. Grateful for the breath that you breathe into your lungs so easily in and out. 
I'm grateful for the space that you're in, your home, maybe your animals that are around you, your children. They could be like animals too. <laughs> so whoever is around you, be grateful to them and take a big breath in and a big sigh. <sighs> And then I just want you to roll over onto your hands and your knees. So hopefully this is comfortable for you. Hands are under the shoulders, knees are under the hips, and the fingers are spread very wide. So we call this a cat-cow pose, and it wakes up the spine. Now you drop the belly, you draw the shoulder blades together, and you look up to the ceiling. This is cow pose. As you exhale, you're going to round through the spine. This is cat pose. You look like an angry cat. You drop the head. Good. Keep pressing the spine to the ceiling. As you inhale, drop the belly, open through the chest, draw the shoulder blades together in your cow. And then as you exhale, navel to spine, keep pressing the spine to the ceiling, drop the head completely. Inhale, open front body, hands draw back to knees, draw shoulder blades together. And then as you exhale, navel to spine, round and pause. Pause in your cat pose and exaggerate the bend so you're really pressing the spine to the ceiling. And now I want you to sink your hips back over your heels. This pose is called child's pose. And you reach the arms out. Now, if this isn't comfortable for you, you can put a blanket or something underneath your knees. Or you can put a block underneath your forehead. And you rest the forehead on a block. And it just brings the earth a little bit higher. Now, this pose is very relaxing. It's very calming. It calms your entire nervous system because your head is lower than your heart. So relax the head to the mat. At the same time, you're reaching your fingertips forward and you're stretching the side body. So you're gonna feel the hips create more space, particularly in the lower back. And so this is the pose I want you to come to at any point that the practice ever feels too much. This is what we call your place of rest. So soften in the face, press more through the fingertips, take a big breath in, and a long sigh. And again, big breath in, and a sigh. Bring yourself back up onto all fours. Take your right arm up to the ceiling and look at your right hand. And then you're gonna scoop your right arm under the left armpit, like you're scooping a big scoop of ice cream. And then you're going to rest the right cheek down. Just rest it on the side of the mat and the left hand can come in front of your face and you tent the fingers of the left hand. So just come onto the tips of the fingers of the left hand and then push the left hand into the earth and you'll feel more space between the shoulders. Breathe in, breathe out. Amazing stretch from between the shoulder blades. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhale, exhale, come back up, right hand under right shoulder. This time, scoop the left arm up, reach as high as you can, look to the ceiling, and on your exhale, you're going to scoop the left arm underneath the right armpit, like you're scooping a different flavor of ice cream. Those kiddies amongst you and all of us love ice cream. Left cheek comes down, right fingertips, press them onto the earth in front of your face. And as you press the fingertips down, you'll feel more space between the shoulder blades. Just releasing the upper back. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more big breath in. One more sigh out. And then come back. Reach both your arms forward. Just reach them forward. Hips are over your knees. Tent your fingertips, feel space in the front of the body. Now you're going to put your hands down on the mat, spread the fingers really wide, curl the toes under, press through the feet and come into downward facing dog. So downward dog, for those of you who have never done it in your life, is an inverted V shape. So your hands are shoulder width distance apart, your feet are hip width distance apart. So check. You may want to bend the left knee and then bend the right knee. Because it's like you're taking your dog for a walk. So just in the morning, particularly when we first get up, our back body is very tight. Hamstrings and calves. So we're loosening the back of our body right now by pedaling out the heels. 
So you're just bending alternate knees, moving the head side to side. Have a slight bend in the elbows to create space around the neck. And just move freely side to side. Really good. Now press both the heels down, spread the fingers and press down. Take a big breath in and a big sigh. Ha! Do that again. Big breath in and sigh. Ha! Gently walk your feet forward on your mat. You may need to bend your knees a lot. Your feet are hip width distance and you're going to bow over your legs. Okay, you're just in a forward fold. You're right, Susie. Yeah, and you just fold forward. So deep forward fold, Uttanasana. So just bowing over your legs, bend your knees as much as you need and let the crown of the head come down towards the mat. Now you're gonna bend the left knee and put the left hand in front of you on the mat and draw the right arm to the ceiling. So you're twisting. Now if you can't reach the earth, you use your block, if you have a block, or um, Harry Potter, fourth book is really a good size. Any big book will do, or big bean can. And then you reach up with your right hand and you're twisting open, reaching, bending the left knee, inhale. Wow, this is amazing. You all look so good. Spread the fingers wide. Reach up more, twist open more. And then as you exhale, bow forward, move the block over in front of the right foot and then sweep the left arm up and bend the right knee. And you'll feel this wonderful opening, this feeling of space across the front of the body. Really press down through the feet, inhale, exhale, and then bow forward, deep fold. Just let the head hang, sweep the arms back behind you, interlace the fingers, and open up the shoulders. So bend the elbows, don't have straight arms, bend the elbows, try and squeeze the heel of the hand together, and feel the shoulder blades come together, drop the head. Allow the blood to drain down to the crown of the head. Now press down through your feet. Feel the earth beneath your feet. Press your feet down and draw them towards one another and draw the lower belly in more. Really folding deeply, relaxing. Feel the stretch in the back of the body, the hamstrings, the calves, inhaling. Exhale, release the hands. Fingertips, press them on your shins and lengthen the body halfway. So halfway lift, we call this. Hands can be on the shins or maybe the thighs, but roll the shoulders back, draw the belly in and squeeze your quadriceps, the muscles at the front of your legs, give them a big squeeze. Draw the lower belly in, feel the crown of the head extend out of the pelvis. And now exhale, fold, just bow. Inhale, rise again, halfway lift. Hands slide up the legs, shoulder blades roll back, Spine is flat, parallel to the mat. Press down, exhale, bow forward, squeeze the air out. Press down through the feet and slowly uncurl, 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 coming all the way up to standing with bent knees. Reach your arms all the way up to the ceiling now. Reach up, we call this Tadasana, so mountain pose. Lift up and look up, reach through the tips of your fingers, look into the ceiling, inhale. And then exhale, you bring the prayer down to the center of your heart. Inhale, soften the knees, sweep the arms nice and wide, reaching up, inhaling, 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 hold at the top. Exhale, draw the prayer all the way down. Exhale, exhale, exhale. One more, big sweep of the arms. Inhale, soft knees, reach up, inhaling, fill up the breath. Inhale, 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 hold at the top. And then exhale, draw the prayer all the way down to the heart center. Fantastic. From here, press through the feet, feel the earth beneath the feet, draw the belly in and reach your arms all the way up, growing taller like a mountain, Tadasana. Reach through the tips of your fingers, looking up. And as you exhale, bow forward, arms are wide, folding at the hips, you hinge forward, hands to the mat. Bend the knees as much as you need. Inhale, lengthen the front of your body. Roll the shoulder blades back, squeeze them together. So halfway lift. Hands are resting on the thighs. Shoulders are back, lower belly is drawn in. Feel it, and then exhale, you bow. From here, walk your hands forward. Take your feet back, 
and come into a plank position. So like a high press up. So the fingers are very, very wide. So really feel the mat beneath your hands. Press the heels back and draw the lower belly in. Now, if this is too much, you drop the knees. So the modification is knees down, always. So listen to the body, drive the heels away, scoop the tailbone under more and draw the lower belly in more and feel the crown of the head extend forward and the shoulder blades squeeze together. Now lower the knees, everybody. Uncurl the toes, so tops of the feet are on the mat. Very gently, draw the chest forward and come to lying down on your mat. So you're on your stomach. I want you to work the back body. So you're just going to press to the fingertips and gently lift your chest off the mat. Now bring the legs closer together. Press the tops of the feet down and feel the kneecaps lifting off the mat. Squeeze the shoulder blades together more, even squeeze the glutes and lift and lengthen through the crown of the head. Now you'll feel all your back body getting stronger. Your lower back, all the muscles around the spine, keep lifting. Maybe some of you can lift your hands so it looks like you're skydiving. Spread the fingers wider. And then maybe some of you can lift the legs too. And keep bending at the elbows, drawing the shoulder blades together, inhaling, fanning the toes. Exhale, hands down. Curl the toes under. Come back onto the knees into child's pose. The place at the beginning, the place of rest, the place of ease. Just allow the head to soften to the mat and let go of your jaw. No tension in your face, let go completely. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhale, press through the hands, drive the pelvis back over the heels more. Stay in child's pose for one more breath. From child's pose, press through hands and feet coming to downward facing dog. So here you are in your dog. If it helps you to have bent knees, have bent knees. Remember the hands are shoulder width distance. You're pressing down through the hands. So with the hands, think forward and down. With the feet, think down and back. And draw the belly in and press the thighs back and relax the head and the neck, no pressure. This time I want you to see if you can lift the right foot off the mat, just let it float up. Press down through the hands, toes point down the right foot. You're just balancing a three-legged dog. See if you can draw the right knee forward and you're gonna place the foot on the mat. Now you may need to put your right hand on your right ankle to bring the foot to the top of the mat. So the option here is hand to right ankle and use that to bring the foot forward. And then here you are in a lunge and you can drop the left knee and curl the left toes and place the hands on the right knee. If your knee is a bit sore, just fold your mat in half. So that's another variation. Just give you some padding. Just literally fold over the mat. That will protect your knee. Hands are on the knee and now reach your arms up. Reach your arms up to the ceiling and then bend at the elbows. And I want you to place your hands around the back of your head to support your head. And then point your elbows to the ceiling and then rest the back of the head in the hands, sink a little deeper and press down to the right heel. So you're pressing your right heel down, draw it back, feel length in the back of your neck. So you want to imagine the crown of the head is drawing away. You're sinking a little lower. You're creating space around all the vertebrae at the top of the neck, the top of the back. Sink a little deeper, inhale. Exhale, squeeze the elbows together more, draw the head up more, sink down more, press the right heel down, draw it back, left hip, draw it forward, lower belly in, and then release the hands, well done. Reach both your arms up, spread the fingers nice and wide, and then as you exhale, place the hands down and take the right leg back. You're on your knees, curl the toes, downward facing dog. Feel the space, feel the length, feel the strengthening, feel the release. Nod your head to say yes. Shake your head to say no. Soften in the elbows, let the face be very soft. Sweep that left leg up this time. Strong in the core, so you're drawing your belly in towards your spine. Flex the left foot and point the toes down. Pausing here in your three-legged dog. 
Just squeeze everything into the center line. And now bend that left knee very carefully, bring it forward. Maybe putting the left hand on the ankle, bring it through and lowering the right knee down. So you rise up, resting the hands on the left knee this time. Take the hands up to the ceiling and reach. As you reach up, feel this. You're lengthening out of your pelvis. So you're creating lots of space. Reach up and sink deeper down, creating length. Then the hands come behind the head. The head rocks back and rests in the hands. Elbows point to ceiling and you sink deeper. Now bring your awareness to your left foot. You're pressing down and drawing it back. The elbows are pointing up and you're supporting the back of the head. Now focus on that right hip coming forward, left hip drawing back, crown of the head lengthening away, head pressing into hands, elbows to ceiling. Inhale, exhale. Inhaling, exhaling. One more big breath, inhale. Exhale, release the arms, well done. Place the hands down. So that's a really good stretch for your hip flexor. Take the left leg back. Curl the toes under, coming to your downward dog. Press the tailbone back, thighs back, fingers really wide. Come up onto the toes. Peel yourself forward into your plank. High press up. Pause here. Remember, you can always drop the knees. Now press the hands down into the earth. Imagine you're pressing the earth away. Really press down. Now imagine drawing the hands towards one another and you're creating space between your armpits. So press down and towards one another. Now lower the knees. Uncurl the toes. Gently glide the torso down onto the mat. Inhale, you're gonna lift the body. Lots of options here. You can bring the legs together. You can even lift the hands but I want you to squeeze the back line. So squeeze the glutes, squeeze the thighs. You can try taking your arms back, palms facing each other, and maybe even interlacing the fingers. This is called locus. So lifting up, well done. Lifting the front of the body. Gaze is down, inhaling. Exhaling, keep squeezing, keep breathing. Fan the toes nice and wide. And then exhale, release down. Hands under the shoulders by the ribs. Curl the toes under. Push back into your child's pose. Pause here. Pause here, just resting. Toes curled under. Now allow the hands, press the hands down, and glide them towards you, coming up onto your shins. So hands slide up, draw them back. You can have the toes curled under. This is a quite a powerful pose when you do, and it stretches the back line of your feet, it stretches the fascia in your feet, which get very tight when we walk. So inhale here, reach the arms nice and high. Exhale, bring the hands down to your heart center. Just tap into this movement of breath and body. Inhale, arms go wide, reaching, lifting, opening. Exhale, hands come down to the chest. Do it again. Inhale, reach, go wide, big circle. Sweeping in all this energy, all this space. Really good. Hands come down the center of the body. And now walk the hands forward onto the mat. Come into your plank pose. Pause in your plank. Draw your belly towards your spine. Really hugging in. Nice and strong. Hands down. Push back to downward dog. Press the hands into the earth. Really good, everyone. Maybe bend your knees a bit more. Maybe soften in the elbows, but press through the hands. Take the right leg up. And this time you're gonna step your right foot to your right hand. And we're gonna come up into a pose called warrior one. So the left foot is gonna turn. And you're gonna turn it to a 45 degree angle, your back foot. So your big toe will be in the same angle as the left corner of your mat. The right knee is over the ankle. Hands can come onto the hips. Yeah, you want space between your feet. So don't try and do it in one straight line because that gives you no stability. Have space. Press down and then reach your arms up. Really good. So right knee over ankle, left foot turning in. If it's too painful on your back left knee or your hip, 
you can be on the toes like we were before in a lunge. So that's the modification. So from here, press down through the feet and reach up. Press down through the feet and draw in, coming into the lower belly. Now reach higher through the hands. As you exhale, draw the arms back. Let them just sweep back. As you inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. Look up. As you exhale, draw the arms all the way back. As you inhale, reach the arms up. Really move with breath. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. If you can, we call it an ujjayi breath. Inhale, fill up, sweep up, look up. Exhale, allow the breath to leave you. Arms come back. One more. Inhale, sweep up to the ceiling. Pause, sink a little bit deeper. Stay here in your warrior one. Hands come to your heart center. You're gonna to open to warrior two. So the only thing you're gonna do is turn the foot to the side and open the arms out. So this now is a hip opener. So you've gone from facing forward to opening out. That makes sense. Back foot across the mat, arms parallel to the earth, right knee to the right. Lower belly, draw it in. Yes, really good warriors, wow. We don't wanna mess with you guys, wheel family. Sink deep, <laughs> go a little bit deeper. Lower belly draws it in. And then exhale, take the left hand behind your back and take the right arm to the ceiling. And you look up, you look up at that front right arm. Look up, open up, reach back, fabulous, come forward. Rest your front arm on your front thigh. So right forearm, right thigh. Left arm up over the ear, reach. Fantastic. Press through both of the feet. Draw the left lung back. Open, relaxing the face, inhaling. Exhaling, keep reaching. Keep growing longer, press through the feet more, reach taller and longer. And then the left hand, place it down on the mat. Come onto the toes of the left foot. See if you can take the right leg back to meet the left coming into your plank. Brilliant, everybody. So good. Any questions at any point, just wave at the screen. Drive the heels back, draw the belly in. You're in your plank, remember you can always drop the knees. Now everybody lower the knees, uncurl the toes, gently bend the elbows and lie down on the mat. As you breathe in, you lift the front body. Feel the shoulder blades squeeze, the legs squeeze, the toes fan. Take the arms a little wider, spread the fingers. Inhaling. Exhale, all take the locust. That's great, Susie. Use your, choose your option. You can draw the arms back. You can even have your arms reaching forward completely. Lifting up, try that. See what everyone works. Inhale. Exhale, hands down, curl the toes, child's pose. Sink back, feel the back body release. Soften in the face. Just rest here, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhale. Exhale. Press down, downward facing dog. Lift the hips up and back. Spread the fingers really wide like starfish. Feel the pelvis drawing back and the lower belly in as the left leg floats up this time. Keep the toes pointing down to keep this pelvis square. Draw the lower belly in and then step the left foot to the left hand. The left hand may need to get hold of the left ankle and in several movements, you get the foot to the top of the mat. When you plant the foot, you're then with your back foot, you turn it to the side. And the right toes this time are pointing to the right corner of the mat. Once you press down, you rise up into your warrior one with your arms. And again, like last time, you don't have to have your back foot at an angle. If it's too difficult, you have it on the toes in a lunge. So lots of options. What matters is that you have space from in between your feet. So that's really good. Bring the left knee forward a bit over your ankle a bit more, Nikki. That's great. So you're really sinking down. Yes, brilliant. So good. Lovely, Alice. Great. Yes, Tessa, reaching up. Now think about your torso. You're trying to draw the left lung back and the right lung forward and soften in those shoulders. Really good. 
Sink a little deeper. Yeah, good, Lorna. Sink down, inhale, even in jeans. I love it. <laughs> Reach higher, inhale, press down through the feet more. As you exhale, sweep the arms back. And as you inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, sweep back. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, sweep back. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, sweep back. Inhale, sweep up. Hold it up. Pause. Sink a little deeper. Stay with this. Reach through all 10 of your fingers. Press down through the feet. Keep focusing on that left lung, left shoulder drawing back. So you've got a lovely square torso to the front of your mat. From here, the hands are going to come to your heart center. You're opening into your warrior two. So the left hand goes forward and the right foot goes across the back of the mat. So that's all you're changing. You're going from a forward facing stance to a side. So you're facing the side wall of your house or your room and the hips are now open. Back foot across the mat, arms parallel to the earth. Warrior two, lovely. Soften in the shoulders, soften in the face. So this is opening your inner thighs. It's opening your hips. Scoop the tailbone under, draw the belly in, strengthening the core. Soften through the shoulders, soften through the face. Inhale. Exhale. Now gently reverse the warrior. You go back, right hand behind the back, left arm alongside the ear. Reach into this new space, inhaling. And then as you exhale, you're gonna rest the forearm on your front left thigh, extended side angle. The right arm reaches over the ear, create space, try not to fold down, open out. So look at the side wall, maybe even look up to the ceiling. Press down through the feet and draw the feet towards one another, feeling the lower belly drawing. Inhale. Exhale, keep reaching, keep lengthening. So good, everybody. Big breath. And then to come out of it, the right hand comes down. The left arm comes down. You come back into your plank position. Shoulders over wrists, heels driving away. Now really hugging. So fingers wide, draw the hands towards one another, but don't move them. Just imagine you are. Remember, you can drop the knees at any point. You're getting so strong in this pose. Everything is working. Heels driving back, lower belly in, lower the knees to the mat. Uncurl the toes. Gently come to lying down. Now this time we're gonna do a sphinx pose. So you're gonna come up onto your forearms, spread the fingers nice and wide like this. And it's like you're at the, the head of the Nile and you're pressing the forearms down, opening through the chest, fabulous. Lengthen to the crown of the head. Now tops of the feet, press them down into the mat and the kneecaps will lift. Inhale, exhale, really good. Now you're gonna take the hands really wide, a bit like a spider, elbows to the ceiling, you're on the tips of the fingers. Now we call these rolling cobras. So the tops of the feet press down, inhale, you lift the front of the body, you come up. As you exhale, you're going to drop your left shoulder towards the mat and your gaze will go to the right. On the inhale, you come to center, lifting. As you exhale, the right shoulder drops, look to the left. Take your hands a bit wider, Susie. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, left shoulder drops, gaze to the right. Inhale, come up to center, lifting. And then exhale, right shoulder drops, look left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, left shoulder drops, look right. Just loosening up all the upper body. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, right shoulder drops. Come back to center. Pause, just lift a little bit higher, strengthening the back. Really good. As you exhale, peel the front body down. Place the hands under the shoulders, curl the toes. Push back into your child's pose. From your child's pose, come into your downward facing dog. So hips lift up and back. Press the hands down, feel space in the back body. 
And then gently, you're going to walk the feet up. Bend the knees a lot and reach the arms up. We call this chair pose, but there's no chair. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so you have to imagine there's a chair and there's definitely not a bar stool. So go a little lower. <laughs> Good, now draw the lower belly in more, press down through the feet, draw them towards one another. And now you're gonna very slowly come to standing. Just pause here while the blood sorts itself out and then lower the arms down and face the palms forward. Really good. So this is called Samastitihi. It literally means standing at attention and finding equal balance. So just notice if you're a bit weight in the left foot or the right foot, try and find the center. And then from here, we're gonna balance. So kids, you're gonna be amazing at this. From here, I want you to draw the right knee up and in. Right hand, hold on to the knee. Now, if you're a bit wobbly today, use a wall, put your left hand on a wall or a chair, hold on to the chair. But just see if you can balance, flex the right foot, draw navel to spine, very slowly, see if you can draw the right knee to the right. You don't have to do this, you can stay as you are. This is gonna open the hip a little bit more. Take the left hand out like a wing and that will help you to balance. Yeah, turn, oh, you got your yellow wellies on, Susie. <laughs> Breathing. Turn the left palm to the ceiling. Yeah, and then you'll open the shoulder as well. So open that left arm, that's it. Now keep drawing the right knee out. Now squeeze your left glute and your left thigh. That will stop you collapsing on that side of the body. Grow taller through the crown and gently bring the right knee back to center. Pause here. See if you can balance with both your arms reaching to the sky. Excellent, wow, amazing. Flex the right foot more. Now, very gently, as you're so good at all of this, all of you, you're gonna pivot through the hips and the right leg's gonna go back behind you. You're gonna come into warrior three. So we've done warrior one, we've done warrior two. This is a third warrior. So you are flying, also known as dekasana. So you're lifting your heart, you're lifting your heel, you're squeezing the belly, amazing. Breathing, reaching into the spring, so good. Lifting, fingers wide, inhale, exhale, and then very gently, you bend the left knee, and then the right foot joins it, and you come to standing. That was amazing. This is not a beginner level class. You're awesome, all of you. Breathe, again, draw the left knee up towards your chest, flex the foot, hand on the knee, and just stand nice and tall. So anytime you're on one leg, it's all about balance. Now balance comes with your breath. It's much easier if you're focused on breathing. Deep inhale, deep exhale. The other thing that we do in yoga is focus our eyes on one place. We call this our drishti. And that also helps you to balance. So you bring your mind from distracting thoughts to complete focus and attention. So pick one place in front of you and bring your vision to that one place completely. Very slowly draw the left knee out to the left. Take the right arm out like a wing to stabilize you and engage the right glute, the right thigh and allow the right shoulder blade to slide down. Turn the right palm to face the ceiling to open the right shoulder. Yes, inhale, navel to spine, grow taller to the crown. Exhale, open out. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, open a bit further. With complete control, draw the left knee back. Amazing focus, everyone. Deep breath in, both arms to the ceiling. Keep breathing, navel to spine. Eyes are set to one point, your drishti. Grow taller, inhale. Exhale, this is all coming from your pelvis and your core as you pivot through your hips. The left leg glides back, the arms extend forward. Warrior three, reach, gorgeous. Fingers are wide, inhaling, lift the left heel, draw lower belly in, stay with this, you're doing so well. Keep on your breath and your gaze, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, last breath, soften the right knee, bring the left foot to the earth, and gently stand up. Amazing. Big breath in. Big sigh. Ah. Do that again. Big breath in. And a big sigh. Ah. Sweep the arms really high. Bend the knees. You're going to do one more balancing pose. You're going to take the right leg up. 
And you're going to see if you can cross it over the top of the left leg. So this is going to be eagle pose. So see if you can balance. You may, some of you, be able to wrap the right leg behind the back, but it doesn't matter if you can't. Just rest it on the top. Right arm is going to come underneath the left arm. And again, you may be able to just get hold of your thumb. You may be able to bring the palms to touch. If that's too much on your shoulders, just do this with your arms on top of one another. Okay, so lots of options. Now, what you want you to do is squeeze the thighs, draw the belly in and breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, sink a little deeper in the pelvis, squeeze the hips in, draw the shoulders back, pause, and then unravel the arms and sweep up out of your eagle. Fantastic, sink deep, chair pose. Sink down in your chair. This time the left leg lifts. The left leg comes over the top of the right leg. The higher you take it up, the easier it is. So lift it as high as you can and wrap it around. Left arm comes underneath the right arm. Maybe you can get the thumb, the fingers, the forearms. Draw the shoulders back and down. Squeeze the inner thighs together and draw the lower belly in. Well done. Big breath in. Big breath out. Inhaling. Exhaling. Keep squeezing. So good, everybody. Incredible focus. Same rules apply. Breath. Drishti, stay with this, lower belly in, fantastic. And then unravel yourself. And basically fresh oxygenated blood is now flushing your body. So release through the arms, the head, lovely. Reach both your arms up. Take the right hand onto the left wrist. Step the right foot back. Bend the left knee and reach over to your right. So I want you to feel an amazing stretch down the left side of your body. Take the gaze up to the ceiling, inhale. Exhale, reach over a little bit more. And then bring the right foot forward, step the left foot back. Bend the right knee and put the left hand on the right wrist. Sink down and in and then grow tall. As you exhale, draw over towards your left. So reaching your right arm away from you, feel the stretch down the right side of the body. Bend the right knee more. Press through the feet, inhaling, exhaling, inhale, and then exhale, come back up. Now we're gonna come down to lying on our backs on the mat. Lots of different ways of getting there, but just see to start with if you can come onto your toes. See if you can balance, just squeezing muscle to bone, arms out in front of you. Spread the fingers wide, just balance here, on your toes, squeezing your core, strengthening your ankles, and then from here, you're going to bend your knees. And imagine you're sliding down the wall ever so slowly, core engaged, slowly, slowly, fingers are wide, slowly, slowly. And this may be as far as you can go, and that's fine. Just see how far you can go. You may want to rest your hands now on your knees or the earth to help you come back. So you're going to come back down and eventually sit on your bottom. You can put your hands either side of you. And we're in what we call boat pose. So your hands are beside you. We're going to start with a modified version, toes on the mat, elbows bent. And then see here if you can lift your legs. Engaging the lower belly. Fantastic. Spread the toes wide. Really good. Really draw into the core. Press the hands down or squeeze the shoulder blades together. Now lower the toes. And then lift. And then lower them. And then lift. And lower them. And then lift, really good. Lower down, lift up, just working your core. Lower down, lift up, lower down, lift up. Pause, pause in your boat. Pause, breathe, inhale, and exhale, lower the feet. Sit up nice and tall, take the arms either side of you. Really straighten the spine, straighten the core, and you're gonna peel your spine down. And you can only do this by pressing down to the feet. So really press down to the feet. You may need to put your hands down to support you. That's great. Listen to your body as you slowly uncurl, 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 uncurl. And then eventually you're lying on your back with your knees bent. Really good. With your knees bent, I want you to 
Press the feet down, so you should be able to feel your heels with your fingertips. Press down, scoop the belly under, and lift the pelvis up. Lift the hips up. So this is a bridge pose, and you're opening the front of your body. Wrap your arms underneath you. See if you can bring your upper arms down and lift the hips to the ceiling. So this is bridge pose. So try and get the heel of your hand, making a clasp with your hands. The feet are parallel, and you're pressing upper arms down, opening the front of the body. Really good. Inhale. Exhale. Inhaling. And then exhale, release the hands. And slowly peel the upper back, the mid back, and the lower back down onto the mat. Now we'll do it again. Press down through the feet. Scoop the tailbone under. Lift the pelvis to the ceiling. This is opening the whole of your front body and it's strengthening your entire back body. Rack your elbows in, interlacing the fingers underneath you. Create a clasp with your hands. Press the feet down into the mat and draw them towards your shoulders. Press the chin, the chest, towards your chin. So it should be lifting up. Now drive your knees forward, away from you. Inhale, press down through the feet. Exhale, draw in. And this is an amazing way of shifting stuck energy, of clearing the mind, of just making you feel a lot more energized. So stay with this. And this is what happens through the practice. Any stuck energy, you perhaps felt a bit dull, gets shifted, and then it starts to make you feel more awake and alive and energized. And that's what's happening right now. Lift the pelvis higher. Breathe in. You're massaging your vagus nerve as you lift up more, open through the front body, and then release the hands. Peel the spine down, upper back, mid back, lower back and be still, do nothing. Take the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to fall away. We call this butterfly pose or Supta Baddha Konasana. So this is opening and stretching the groins, the hips. Place one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. Close your eyes, take a big breath in. And a sigh. <sighs> Inhale into the belly. Exhale, sigh, let it all go. Inhale, feel the belly rise, lift it up. Hold the breath, hold the breath. Exhale, sigh, release belly to spine. See if you can really do this. Big breath in, belly rises, chest rises, lungs expand. Inhaling, inhaling, inhaling. Hold the breath, hold the breath, hold the breath. Exhale, exhale, feel the belly drop to spine, feel the ribs draw in, exhale. Big inhale, belly rises, fill up with breath, inhaling, ribs rise, expanding, filling up, opening through the whole center of the body. Hold your breath at the top, hold at the top, hold at the top. Exhale, allow the chest to soften, the ribs to soften the belly to soften. Really, really good. Take the hands on the outsides of the thighs, draw the knees together now. Give yourself a big hug, draw the thighs into the chest, hug in, pressing the lower back into the mat, just gently rock side to side, massaging the lower back and the back of the skull. Now take what we call happy baby, you may already have a baby over the top of you, <laughs> in which case, try and straddle them, flex the feet and spread the toes and see if you can get hold of the soles of the feet. If you can't reach your feet, you get hold of your calves or your shins or the backs of your knees. But just open your hips nice and wide, the knees wide, and be a very happy baby as you rock gently side to side, just releasing, really good. Now bring the right ankle across the front of the left thigh. So you're making a figure four with your legs, right ankle over left thigh, and you flex both your feet. It's really important that the feet are flexed to keep the toes active, that protects the knee. Now thread the hands through and get hold of the back of the left thigh. 
So you're like threading the needle around the left thigh, you're getting hold of it. At the same time as you breathe in, I want you to draw that left thigh towards you and the right knee will go out. Keep the toes active, keep the feet flexed. Inhale, draw left thigh towards you. Exhale, draw right knee out. Inhale, left thigh comes in. Exhale, right knee goes out. Keep breathing in, keep breathing out. Feel this release. Inhale, exhale. Now swap sides. Opening the left hip this time. Left ankle goes across the front of the right thigh. Now you may notice a difference. We tend to be tighter in one side of our body than the other. So just be aware of it. And the practice of yoga will eventually balance us out. So thread the arms around, get hold of the back of the right thigh. Flex both the feet and draw the right thigh towards you. Toes are nice and wide, left knee going out. Shoulders are soft. Inhaling. Exhaling. Feel it. Inhale, left right thigh comes towards you. Exhale, left knee goes out. Feet are flexed, toes are fanning apart. Keep the toes really active. That protects your knee. Keep breathing, softening in the shoulders, the face. Inhaling. Exhaling. Really feel this release. And then gently release both your legs. Place the feet down. We're going to do an inversion now. So we're going to get the legs higher than our heart. So the first one is waterfall. The legs just go straight up. If you have a block, you can sit on it under your tailbone because you're going to get your pelvis higher than your heart. Or you have a cushion, rest on it here. There are other inversions, shoulder stand, head stand, hand stand. But I think today we'll just stick with waterfall. It's a very calming inversion. Have slightly bent knees, slightly bent ankles and toes active. Now the hands are resting on the ground and the palms face up. So both your legs are lifted. Your pelvis is elevated if you can on a block or a cushion and palms are facing the ceiling. And you're just allowing the blood to flow all the way down from your toes, your ankles, over your calves, over your knees. The blood flushes down now over your thighs and it pulls in your pelvis. And then it gets drawn up towards your heart and then your heart reoxygenates it and sends it back up again. So it's very, very calming for your nervous system. And it's great for your circulation. Close the eyes and just feel the breath move through your body. Making your legs feel light that carry us around all day, always on our feet, working so hard. Just bring lightness to our legs, our toes, and a softness to our face, our jaw. Just feel this softening, this undoing. Every evening, this is a wonderful pose to do before you go to sleep. If you ever suffer from slightly swollen ankles or tired legs at the end of the day, or even when you're watching TV, just have your legs draped over the sofa and just lie on the floor. Watch the TV upside down, <laughs> might be a bit tricky, but just have your legs up as often as you can. Once a day, at least do this. So good for you. Just allow everything to soften. And then gently bend the knees now and place the feet down on the mat. Lift the pelvis high, removing the block or the cushion, and then allow the pelvis to sink down onto the mat. And you're going to draw the right knee in and give it a big squeeze and extend the left leg long. So we call this a supine twist. So really hug the right knee in. This is so good for your limbs. So give it a massive squeeze. Flex the right foot, fan the toes, hug in, squeeze, and then you're going to draw the right thigh across the body. So you're twisting. So the right thigh comes across, the right arm goes out wide like a wing, and the gaze goes over the right shoulder. Sorry about all the lefts and the rights, um, <laughs> but hopefully it's all making sense. So look over the right shoulder, allow the right thigh to drop to the left. So you're going in opposite direction. And you wanna feel the shoulder soften, the palm of the right hand faces the ceiling. 
And you just close your eyes, release your jaw. Take a breath in and a breath out. Inhale and exhale. And now come back onto your back, swap sides. So the right leg extends long and the left knee this time, give it a big squeeze, draw it in, getting into that hip flexor, getting into the back of the glutes. Give it a really big squeeze, hug in and then draw it across the body, right hand outside of the IT band, so the outside of the left thigh. You draw it across the body. Now the left arm comes out like a wing and you may feel a pop or a crack or a release. And this is you releasing your lower back. It's an amazing pose. It stretches your QL, which is this muscle that wraps around the front of the body and attaches at the back of your lower spine. And it gets really stiff, especially if we sit at a desk or we walk a lot or we do a lot of lifting and twisting. You've got to keep your QL loose. And this is a wonderful release for that. So gaze over the left shoulder, close your eyes, feel a softening in the body, a softening in your mind. Inhale, exhale, inhaling, and then exhale, release, final place of rest, Shavasana. So Shavasana, you take the feet really wide. If you have a blanket, put it over the top of you. If you've got an eye bag, you can put that over your eyes to block out the light, which calms your optic nerve. So if you want to come into darkness, that's gorgeous. Take the feet the width of the mat and the arms come out beside you and you turn your palms to face the ceiling and the toes flop out. So you want your legs to be really wide here and that will help you release the hips. And the arms go wide. You imagine they're drawing out of the shoulders and the head is lengthening up. So you've got lots of space around the neck. Now take a big breath in and a sigh. Breathe in again, inhale, inhale, inhale. And then a big exhale, 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 exhale. And now just relax the tongue, let it fall away. Let the face be soft. Have space between your teeth and allow the lower jaw to drop back. Your whole face is soft. Let your eyes sink further back and the skin on your face really soften. You can even feel the brain drop to the back of your skull as the weight of the head sinks further into the earth. Feel the throat get soft and the chest. And now bring your awareness to your shoulders. Let them go your arms and your wrists. Now your thumbs, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, little finger, the palms of your hands. Feel this energy sweep up your arms and flow down your chest, to your abdomen, to your pelvis, to your hips. Let them go. Bring your awareness to your thighs. Now your knees, your calves, your ankles, the tops of your feet, all 10 toes. Release the big toe, the second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe. Now the sole of the foot. Let it go. Be aware of the contact of your heels in the earth, the backs of the calves, the tailbone, the upper back, and the back of the head. Feel the backs of the hands sink deeper into the earth. Just allow the front body to melt deeper towards the back body as your whole body surrenders into the mat. You're so aware of every single part of your body. You have strengthened every muscle, rinsed every organ, and strengthened your bones. 
by being still, you're allowing the residue of the practice to be absorbed into every cell of your body, allowing your nervous system to regenerate and your body to heal. It's only when we're in this state, your parasympathetic state, that your body heals, your place of rest, they let go completely and sink deeper. Place both your hands on your belly. Take a big breath in and feel the hands rise. Hold your breath and exhale out of your mouth. Inhale, belly rises. Hold the breath. Exhale out of your mouth. Draw the knees in towards your chest and give yourself a big hug. Hug yourself like you're hugging someone you've not hugged for a very long time that you really wish you could hug. Squeeze so tightly, really squeeze. And then roll to your right or your left, onto your side and you're just curled up in a little fecal ball. It's nice and still. And very gently rise, try not to disturb the peaceful energy that you've created in your body. And then you sit however is comfortable for you to sit, just like you did in the beginning. And then here, just sweep the arms wide. As you do so, just remind yourself of all the things that you were grateful for. This day of spring, this new energy, see if you can feel that inside your body now as you seal your hands to a prayer above you. As you exhale, draw that prayer all the way down to your very heart center. It's like you plant a seed inside your heart. And all these feelings you're now feeling, just plant them. And the practice, the breath, the movement is helping that seed to grow. It's like you're watering it with your breath. And just be still and just notice how you feel. How does your body feel now? Perhaps a little bit looser than when you started. How about your mind? Is there a little bit more space now between the ears and your breath? Your crucial life-giving breath. Is it a little bit clearer, a bit deeper? Maybe now you're a bit more conscious of every breath that you take. You breathe 22,000 times a day. It's just wonderful to slow it right down and focus on each breath. Just remind yourself of your words of gratitude that you gave yourself at the start of the practice. Maybe you can chuck in a few more things now that you're truly grateful for. Take a big breath in and a massive sigh. <sighs> Bring the thumb knuckles to the center of your forehead, your third eye center, your place of intuition. Just feel this length in the spine and your body or the space that you've created and have the most wonderful spring. Just enjoy every day as you feel the breath and all the energy of the land and everything grow and come to life. Such a magical time. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste. Well done. You were all brilliant. I can't believe um, how well you all did, especially Zoom and perhaps not me not being able to teach you in person. Um, and I've never met most of you. So, so it's really fabulous. Thank you so much. This is Blessed. This is um, our studio, which prior to COVID used to have like 40 people practicing a, a thriving community. And now we're a thriving community online. And it's amazing. We have 28 live classes a week. So if you want to do more, um, we have beginner classes every single Saturday. We just really want everyone to get moving and get breathing and practice yoga. So we have something for everybody. Slow classes, yin, restorative and energized. So if you're interested, just email us um, and we'd love to love to see you again. But I hope you enjoyed it. Drink loads of water.
eat really well, have a gorgeous weekend, and hopefully the sun will come back. Yesterday was amazing. <laughs> so hopefully we'll have that again. But thank you, all of you. And have thank an amazing you. day.